look y'all he's trying to he's trying to squeeze me my good friend Craig he's part of the hardwired exotics family so for those that are new or, or haven't tuned in, in a while I'll introduce myself again we'll try to make that more of a habit so but this week we're going to talk about something that happens um, that's it's just one of the bound uh, downsides of, uh, of breeding and uh, for whatever reason I always seem to have one clutch every year that ends up with what we call a sharp jaw. Why, I don't know. Um, the clutches all the way around this particular clutch and, and past clutches all hatch fine. It's just, for whatever reason, these these rare things just happen and uh, it, it's definitely not fun, uh, definitely not what you want, especially on a good clutch like this. But it's, uh, it's just part of it, so. I don't think it's fair for people that are getting into the hobby to not see some of the uh, the bad things that go along with breeding. So, uh, what are these? So the pairing on this was cypress cinnamon yellow belly to a pastel bamboo. I like it. And uh, she actually had six six eggs. Um, three were bamboos. Mm-hmm. Luckily, the three that are ban were bamboo or are bamboos are not that bad. Um, the other three, one was very severe and the bottom half of the jaw was completely gone. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't live shortly after it hatched. And the other two um, were pretty bad off too. And uh, we, went, we went ahead and culled those. So... Anyway, um, these two have already shed. They were first two to shed. The other one's still shedding, but we do we did keep three, and we're gonna see how it, how it goes. So shark jaw happens when the lower jaw does not come out as far as it should. So it's kind of like an overbite to the extreme. Yep. Okay. So. If we can get so instead of it closing properly, it's just going to have a, a gap in it. Yeah. So this one's actually worse. So we'll kind of take it over. And sometimes I actually we've done a show this past weekend, and uh, we I actually seen some animals on somebody's table who had this. Okay. Sometimes they eat. Sometimes they don't. I don't. You know, there's no uh, indication as to what makes it or or if they'll survive or not um these aren't too bad and the ones i've seen in the show on somebody's table uh looked about about like these right and they had no idea they had they just they never even seen they never flipped the animal over to look at pay attention they probably just thought it was just a normal where the mouth closes yeah it's just slightly yep. pulled so back. unfortunately some people don't even ever even notice it right but this is um this is something that happens and then is not as it's supposed to be. And this isn't a uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? An Genetic. extreme version of. Yeah, these other. aren't extreme. I, I really wish that I would have kept the uh, extreme ones. To, so to basically, it'd, it'd be too, but I didn't. instead of like this, it'd be more like that. Yep. AKA a shark yep. jaw. And one of them was back even further. Oh, in, like that. That's horrible. Yep. Poor old guy. It didn't make it at yeah. all. So you know. And uh, I'll pull out another one in a minute to give you a comparison shot to one that actually looks like it's supposed to. But uh, a lot of people think, well, it's got to be genetic or this or that. And I completely do not think that it is genetic. Right. Um, I think it's just a rare occurrence of something that goes on, whether it's the incubator or not. I've used, I use different incubators, but I always have one clutch right. that does this every year for the past five or six years. Does it happen at the same time frame? I'll have to go back and look at that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's ways to figure something out. And it's always the entire clutch. Really? Yeah. The entire clutch always had And usually it's a six or seven inch clutch. So. Okay. It could be something to do with possibly, um, like the eggs not forming correctly or, or something like that, you think? I don't know. As opposed to an incubator? Because it's, it's never the same animal, is it? Nope. Nope. All the genetics that make the uh, shark jaw animals have all been um, non genetically the same, nor the same parents. Right. Because you know you see all the different kinds, mm -hmm. you know, from normals all the way up to some you know wild stuff. Yep. But uh, anyway, let me grab another baby just to show you a comparison. So here you can see side by side what the difference is. You can see how the lower lower jaw goes back further. So this is your the normal jaw look, and this is the shark jaw. Mm -hmm. So and they call it the shark jaw because from the side it kind of looks like a shark head, shark mouth, shark jaw. See, I never do it even. Yep, most people never do notice it. Yeah. So. so Shark jaw, unlike some other things, this would be considered um, in a in a more extreme form hazardous to the animal because the animal wouldn't be able to eat. Right? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like my boa constrictor we talked about that ended up getting jaw rot and I had to assist feed them. Yeah. And that probably ended up in my younger years was more harmful to the animal than just putting them out of its misery. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, they're going to act normal. They're going to do everything normal in mm -hmm. life. Just Sometimes, for whatever reason, they don't even try to eat. I don't know if they feel like they can't strike or they don't strike or, or whatever, but. Or if they're not going to be able to get it to where it opens up and pulls. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't study the reasons for this, but I, I can tell you that. And I can't speak snakes, so I don't know what it comes <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah. So I uh, completely have no idea, but. Um, the only issue that's going to cause them is whether or not they can eat or not. Right. So these two, as well as the other bamboo, uh, I'm pretty sure will not have an issue eating because it's so mild. Mm -hmm. But there are severe cases, like I told you uh, earlier, that the jaw is almost gone and they, right. they, they never eat. So Now, um, with this being a genetic abnormality, um, could this be transferred to the later down the line? Yeah. I have never bred an animal that's had shark jaw to right. know if it transfers down the line right. personally, but I do know people that have bred them and the babies come out fine. Okay. And I do not think that it's genetic or or, or anything. It's I think just it's completely one of those things. Either forming of the egg or incubation problems. I don't think it has anything to do genetically with either one of the parents mm -hmm. or the babies passing that on in future. So this would be absolutely something we would just keep for a pet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything, all of these will be discounted price because of the, the shark jaw. Yeah. Uh, once I get them eaten and comfortably, they will be available, um, but they will have a discounted price because of that. So, that's, see, that's good. And I, I, I sell these animals that that have these slight defects. Mm -hmm as a pet um, I make those things noticeable and up front with the customer right, right. about that because I don't want any issues with anything but I never sell anything until it's eaten and I'm comfortable with 
it going to somebody else that's going to be able to give it a good life and mm -hmm. and uh, you know if they choose to breed and that, that's fine i don't think it's going to be a problem but i would just rather put pet home or pet right only so. and, um i don't even get my pets before they've eaten four or five times yep. so. yeah 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 y'all want to see critics <laughs> Yeah, I got to see. I got to see my my snake again. I get to come over and see my snake. Yeah, here's Craig's snake. There he he's is. had a couple of meals now, but he uh, ate. he's still uh, still here. He's still here. So maybe in two or three weeks, I'll be able to get him. Yeah, <laughs> he's still here. But now they're go they're gorgeous. Oh man, they're and beautiful. Just, you beautiful. know, like I said, it doesn't matter if you have a slight defect; you can still be good looking. Oh. oh do anything. My name's Cassie. I have to hold the camera like this. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> uh, so, something I want to show off. So, everybody remembers the Super Orange Dream Blackhead that we made earlier this year. Uh, a good friend of ours, Ryan, bought it from me. Um, I sold him that animal praying that I made something better. Oh, who's that? Knock, knock. I just Heard you talking? What you doing? Show everybody your new tattoo. What is it? Take two. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're praying that we made a better Super Orange Dream Blackhead combo. Well, a Super Duper Orange Dream? Super, super, super Duper Blackhead combo? So, we done Blackhead OD Yellow Belly to OD Mojave. Okay. And uh, this, when this thing hatched, Oh, it was really pretty. I knew it wasn't the Super Orange Dream, but I definitely knew that it was Blackhead OD Mojave. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing, I mean, the thing's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. See, anyway. so here's how I'm telling the Blackheads is because I can see this iridescent on all the black. Yep. And then I obviously know it's Mojave because it looks like a bunch of Cheerios <laughs> Cheap. with a stripe. Um, and then how do I tell the rest of it? So the Orange Dream is going to give you this elongated pattern okay so that stretches my pattern out yep, sure. okay as well as the overall color of the animal it's hard to see orange dream especially with blackhead or any of the dark animals until the uh, animal starts aging some okay orange dream makes the animal just really light colored compared to what it normally does i wish i had a blackhead mojave by itself just mm -hmm. to show but I, I don't unfortunately so and i don't either so anyway having this animal I knew what I had when this one came out. This is the Super OD Blackhead Mojave. And this is where I can see the orange string. Though. Yeah, but Okay, now I can see it. So it's, it, in this one, it's it's hard yep. for me. To, I can see it barely here, I guess, now. Yep. But with this, it's, it's very visual for me. Yep. Okay. So, introducing the world's first Super OD Blackhead Mojave. Look, y'all. He's trying to. He's trying to squeeze me. He's trying to squeeze me good. Oh, he's got me. Oh, you coming for me too? You want some? Get some. This guy is going to uh, stay here with us. He's too pretty to uh, to get rid of. So mm -hmm. we were fortunate enough to make two Super OD Blackheads this year, both males. A friend of ours has one, and this guy's staying here. And this one. That one is available. Is available. Um, it does not come with my arm. It thinks it does. It thinks it does. It's loving on me right now. He's sweet. Cool. Big pie girl. Oh. You I'm need like, to name your pie stuff, man. That needs to be like apple pie, cherry pie, pumpkin pie. Oh, come on now. Man, I'm not a white girl. Come on. Pumpkin pie. Basic white girl. Basic white girl. Basic white girl. Can I show everybody my favorite snake? Uh, I don't know. I might let you. Mike? Mike's on a chicken's ass. Along with what nots and maybes. Along with what nots and maybes, that's right. So the phrase of the day. <laughs> Thanks for watching our daddy's channel. Make sure you subscribe.